Right now, I'm going to show you five tips inside of Photoshop that you may not know. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, and today I've got five tips for you. Now, some of these tips may be a little frustrating because maybe you did things the difficult way in the past. And I know for me, when I discover a new tip, I just want to bang my head against <laughs> the desk because it's like, man, I've been doing it this way all this time and there was a better way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a multi-layered layout. So usually what you do is you load in all the images and then kind of copy them all over into one document. I'll show you how to do it all in one step right now. So what we do is we go under file and instead of choosing open, we're just going to scoot all the way down here and we're going to go to scripts and under scripts, we're going to choose load files into stack. Now we can choose the browse button that will take us to a folder. And here we've got a folder for a bunch of thumbnails. I could select all of them or just select a few. Why don't we grab these ones, click open. Now we have the option here to create a smart object after loading them. And then what that would do is just put them all inside one smart object. We're not going to bother. We're just going to click OK. All right, so we've got all of these images loaded into different layers instead of different documents. They're all ready for compositing. What these are is actually the thumbnails for my new Selection Secrets course. So what I'm going to do is create a series of thumbnails. Okay, so what we want to do is just crop this down. So we're going to grab our crop tool right here. Let's just hit clear. And we're just going to decide, hey, how big do we want our thumbnails? And so we can just kind of move it around. And let's just say we're going to make our thumbnails this big. Now you could go in width and height and set an exact size. But let's just do that. Make sure delete crop pixels is not on, but it's off. And then we just simply click OK. And now it's cropped it to the size of our document. Now notice none of our layers are cropped. So all we need to do now is just position these inside there. So we're just going to hit control T and it's going to enable us to create our thumbnails. So, you know, we would just kind of size each one how we want it. All right. So now we've repositioned each one of those thumbnails within that space. So what we want to do now is make a thumbnail. So we want each layer to be a new image. So rather than choosing, you know, file export, then hiding this, choosing file export, hiding it, file export and renaming each one one at a time, which might have been the way you've done it in the past. There's a faster way. What we're going to do is just choose file. We're going to choose export and then under export, we have layers to files. So why don't we do this right now? We're just going to call them thumbnails. Thumbs for short, of course. Let's save them out as JPEGs. So we can put them onto the web. About seven is good quality. And let's choose a destination. And all we do now is hit run. And we're done. Let's look on the desktop. And look at this. We've got all our thumbnails, one at a time. JPEGs at exactly the size that we need them in. <laughs> and as you can see there, very quickly, we were able to create all of those different documents, drop them into different layers, size them within that cropped area, and then export them all at the exact size that we want. So now those thumbnails are ready for uploading to the website or brochure, whatever you want to do with them. All right, let's move on to the next tip. So what we're going to be looking at right now is how to discover how to do things inside of Photoshop by examining actions. So let's open up the actions panel. Window actions. And here's some actions that come with Photoshop. Of course, you can find them all over the place. We've even got some on Photoshop Cafe for download. But let's have a look at a vignette. How would we create a vignette? So if we look here, it says selection. So why don't we do it with this layer here? And all we need to do is follow the instructions. I'll show you. Make a selection. So let's make a, I don't know, let's make an elliptical selection around here just for fun. All right, so we've got a selection. The next thing we want to do is let's pop it open. We want to make a snapshot from current history using full document. OK, so we just go under the windows here and we choose the history panel. And this is where we make a snapshot. So we've created that snapshot right now. And if we go to the very top there, we can see there's our snapshot. OK, let's separate these so we can see our instructions. So this is kind of like a, a recipe. And if we look under the feather, we open it, we can see it's a five pixel feather. So let's do that. Select, 
we're going to choose to modify feather and it's five pixels. Great. So we've done that. And what do we do here? Layer via copy. So that's control J. We'll copy that layer. And that's what we've done there. You can see there it is. Okay, what's the next step? Show current layer, which is that layer right there. Make a layer. Okay, so we're going to make a layer. Fill. And we're going to fill this with white. Okay. So we filled the new layer with white. Capacity 100, normal. We did all that. And now move the current layer to previous layer. So if we move that to the previous layer, it goes there. And there's our vignette. All right, let's see if I've got it right. So here's our layer. I'm going to make a selection around it. We're going to go here. We're going to choose vignette. And we're going to hit the play button. Five pixel feather. And look at that. That looks about right. So this is one we created. Yep, spot on. So you can reverse engineer any action just by following the instructions like I did just there. Let's look at another tip. And this tip, I'm going to show you how to get more of everything inside of Photoshop. So let's go down and have a look at our custom shapes. And there's a lot of libraries inside of Photoshop. So if we pop this open, we can see, hey, here's some shapes that come with Photoshop. But here's the tip. Click on here and there's more. So if we click all and then choose append, now we've got all these shapes. Now this works for so many more things than shapes. It also works for presets. It works for styles. Let's have a look at the window. Let's go under the styles panel. Here's the styles that ship with Photoshop. And I'm sure you're familiar with these. Really useful, right? Well, let's have a look and see what else we've got. Well, we've got buttons. Let's load in these buttons. And if we choose a append, boom, now we've got a whole bunch more. You know, we've got all kinds of styles, abstract styles, append, and you can see we're starting to add all these different presets into Photoshop. Another example, of course, would be gradients. Let's grab our gradient tool. We see there's all the default gradients you're used to seeing with Photoshop. Maybe there's a few more here than you're used to, and that's because they're all under here. So we've got all kinds of things. Let's grab our metals, append it, boom. Now we've got new gradients that we can apply within Photoshop. This also applies to things like brushes, color swatches, things there, textures, patterns, lots and lots of things there inside of Photoshop if you look around. I want to create a gradient here. So we've got this layer with our flight attendant and underneath we've got this layer. Notice I just kind of stretched these. So we want to kind of blend it in, make it look nicer. So the way to do it is to go here and we're going to create a layer mask. Now we're going to hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors. We're going to grab our gradient. Make sure we grab our foreground to background gradient, which is the first one. Linear, normal mode, opacity, blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to go in here. And if we drag like this, we can create, see this nice smooth blend there. So we're kind of blending that into the layer underneath. Now, here's the thing. If I want to do the other side, See how it undoes that side because we're applying one at a time. Now, one of the options we could do is we could use a foreground to transparent. But what I'm going to do is show you how to create multiple masks inside of one layer. So all we need to do is hit Control G, puts it inside a group. And with that group, we can apply a layer mask to the group. And now we can go on the other side and notice how we can blend the other side in nicely. And we blend in both sides. Here's the cool thing. I can hit Control G again and create another mask, do the top, or maybe not quite that crazy from here. We can create another group, Control G, and create another mask on there. Now we're four in and we could blend it this way. So as you can see, you can keep nesting those layers into groups and applying layer masks to the groups. I just gave you a really basic example here, but there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. So I'm curious, how many of these were new to you? Let me know in the comments underneath. I'd love to know. And also let me know what kinds of things you would like to learn. If you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button right now. Become part of the Cafe Crew. I do a new tutorial every single Tuesday. Also hit that notification bell so you know when I upload it. And if you like this video, smash the like button into dust. Tell your friends about it. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.